Out in the as you know, ocular blindness is the most common of sight manifestation, as multifactorial etiology and bus physiology. The clinical manifestation have poor correlation between sign and symptoms. Less than 60% of the dry eye are symptomatic. There is no single therapeutic strategy that fits all patients. As you know, ocular dryness has many alternative medical terms like dry eye disease, dry eye syndrome, xerosis, xerophthalmia, keratoconjunctivitis, and dysfunctional tear syndrome nowadays. According to International Dry Eye Workshop 2017, the definition of ocular dryness is multifactorial disease of ocular surface characterized by a loss of homeostasis of tear film and accompanied by ocular symptoms in which tear film instability, hyperosmolarity, ocular surface inflammation, and damage neurosensory abnormality play etiological roles. What about the prevalence? The prevalence of dry eye ranged from 5% to 50% in different populations across the world, more common in women than men. The estimated number, 25 to 30 million all over the world. In the United States, only 17 million were diagnosed with dry eye last year. Global prevalence in Europe estimates from 7 to 22%. In our capable, we found dry eye in female aged fifth, over 50 years. This is due to postmenopausal hormonal change. In the next generation, we found female but young middle aged due to multi screen lifestyles and contact lens wearer. Nowadays, dry eye disease affects patients of both sex at younger ages. The prevalence of dry eye in visual display terminal users is from 10% to 88%. The average adult now spend more time using digital uh, media than sleeping. Also in, Cor in Korea, the prevalence, of diabetic, uh, the prevalence of dry eye was about 7% among primary school children who used video devices, including smartphone, laptop, tablets. Dry eye can have substantial effect on quality of life. In general, the impact of dry eye on quality of life, as you know, it persists over a long period of time. It increases with increased progression and or severity. Dry eye patients suffer from greater depression and anxiety, and one case reported higher suicidal ideation. Dry eye patients have shown reduced quality of life in multiple studies. Also, in severe dry eye may impact life to a similar extent as dialysis and severe angina. What about the concept of ocular dryness? A specific complex biological continuum responsible for maintenance of corneal clarity, elaboration of stable tear film for clear vision, as well as protection of eye against microbial and, the micro and the mechanical insults. The comprising a variety of disorders on cornea, eyelid, mobile gland, conjunctiva, lacrimal apparatus, tear film will lead, the, will lead to this disease. As you know, healthy tear film preserves smooth optical surface, comfort, epithelial cell health, and protection from environmental and microbial insults. As you know, there are, there are three main tear films. The superficial layer is lipid layer is derived from mombomian gland. It maintains smooth optical surface and prevents evaporation. The next Equus layer is derived from lacrimal gland. It is a complex of mixture of proteins, myosin, and electrolytes. The last layer is myosin. It is derived from goblet cell. It provides viscosity and stability during blink cycle. Normal tearing depends on this neural uh, feedback loop. As you see, there is a receptor sent neural stimulation to the center of, center of uh, ocular uh, secretory uh, gland, which will send secretomotor nerve impulse to lacrimal gland to sustain and support tear and maintain ocular surface dry, uh, so, sorry, wet. The number of articles on inflammation and dry eye has increased, especially in the last 10 years. They conclude that when the ocular surface and the lacrimal gland are chronically irritated, T cell become activated. These activated T cells recruit additional T cells and cause an immune based local inflammation. Also, cytokines are released in tears. This further irritates the ocular surface and the block messages to lacrimal gland. 
as a result, normal tear secretion is reduced and the chronic dry eye syndrome symptoms were avoided. If money tear film in dry eye or dysfunctional tear syndrome, we found, we found that the retroris are increased, also cytokines are increased in tear film, also activate proteins and immunoglobulin G, A, immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin M. But the protein uh, level well decreased and also IgGA well decreased. So the inflammation will disrupt normal, the normal neural control of tearing. This state will be continuous, so it will lead to what's called of inflammatory virtuous cycles. The inflammatory virtuous cycles in dry eye disease includes tear film instability, imbalance, tear hyperosmolarity, apoptosis of conjunctiva and the cornea, magnet neurogenic inflammation, cytokine release, and matrix metalloproteins activation will increase. This visual cycle can be initiated or exacerbated by extrinsic factors like mongolian gland disease, LASIK procedures, allergic conjunctivitis, contact lens wearer, and also intrinsic factor can lead, can initiate or exacerbate this by aging, sex steroid imbalance, autoimmune disease. We can classify dry eye according to etiology, mechanism, and severity. According to etiobasogenesis, we can classify the dry eye to an aqueous deficient state, which contribute 14%, and the evaporative state which constitute 50% and the mixed type 36%. As you see, the, the evaporative state is the most common cause of dry eye. This diagram shows the classification equus deficient, Jogren syndrome, primary or secondary, non Jogren syndrome, lacrimal deficiency, lacrimal gland, duct obstruction, reflex block. Also, a vibrative state can divide it into intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic like distortion of lead aperture, mobovian gland deficiency, low blink rate. Extrinsic like vitamin A deficiency, contact lens wearer, preservative drugs, especially topical eye drops, and ocular surface disease like allergy. There are many aggravating factors. Nowadays, the most, is, the most common is prolonged use of computers and reading. Also aging, postmenopausal hormonal change, contact lens wearer, indoor environment like air condition ceiling fans, and outdoor environment like dry or windy condition, frequent flying, smoking, health condition, especially systemic disease, medication like antihistaminic, antidepressant, beta blockers, and contraceptive pills. Finally, eyelid problems like leg of salmos and bifrites. What about dry eye and contact lens wearer? As you know, contact lens dynamic can lead to alteration in the preconeal tear film, also can reduce corneal sensation, corneal hypoxia, reduce the blinking, and thermal destabilization. How can I diagnose a case of dry eye? Clinician relate to a large degree on their case history as an important tool to diagnose and categorize dry eye. Patients with dry eye tend to get worse at night, while patients with mombomian gland dysfunction are worse in the morning. Symptomatic response to artificial tear can support the diagnosis of dry eye. We can stress on past ocular history and past medical history and the medication as a risk, as a risk factors for dry eye. What about the common symptoms? As you know, ocular discomfort is the most common symptom, ocular irritation, formal sensation, blurring of vision, but please pay attention to that. Many symptoms are, are similar to those seen in more common conditions like mild blephrites, conjunctival infection, allergy, and refractive errors. So we have to exclude these disease from ocular dryness. Also, Correlation between symptoms, clinical sign, and diagnostic test results are very valuable. These are the clinical manifestations I said. Irritation, redness, burning, tearing, contact lens intolerance, increased frequency of blinking, itchy eyes, foreign body sensation, blurred vision, photophobia, and mucus discharge. 
Symptom questionnaire is very important. They can explore different aspects of dry, dry eye disease, including diagnosis, identification of precipitating factor, and the impact on quality of life. It can be completed while patient is in the waiting room and can be rapidly interpreted by physician. The most popular one is ocular surface disease index questionnaire. It contains three sections based on the rate of symptom occurrence, limitation of certain activities, effect of environmental condition. We found that it has high sensitivity and specificity in distinction between normal and dry eye disease. Also, it is a valid and reliable for measuring dry eye disease. On examination, we have to Sarah examine eyelid for lid margin, lid lashes, infection, crusting, lid closure. Also, conjunctival sac for degrees, tear meniscus, increased debris, and tear fill, and the mucus discharge. Also, pulpar conjunctiva for dry lusterless, the total spot, and the hybremia. Also, cornea for dry lusterless, irregular surface, superficial bunket keratitis, filaments, ulcer, or scar in severe cases. Is dry eye diagnostic test? Is one single test can be diagnostic? No. No single test can assess integrity of tear film and severity of dry eye. The result of multiple abnormal tests can be used to diagnose dry eye. There are many tests according to type of evaluation, as you see. First, tear break up time, as you know, it indicates of tear film instability in all different causes of dry eye. There are two types. The invasive type, it has wide variability of result, but a non-invasive tear breakup time, which is a topography-based imaging system using distortion of miles reflected on the preconial tear film, but it has not yet become a routine part of examination, but it has a limited it, it is limited to clinical studies. Fluorescein clearance test, as you know, delayed clearance of tears from the eye is thought to be a contributing factor in pathogenesis of dry eye. So tear turnover is very important for improving inflammatory cytokines, providing fresh supply of growth factor. So tear turnover rate defined as a percentage by which fluorescein concentration in tear, decrease per time after installation. Tear film osmolality, as you know, increased in tear osmolality due to increased electrolytes. It is considered a hallmark of dry eye disease. It is a gold standard for diagnosis. It is not uh, widespread due to the cost consideration, but it has very high sensitivity and specificity. Shermer test. There is no strong or correlation between the level of tear production and severity of dry eye. So Schirmer test has high specificity, but very, very low sensitivity. So I can't depend on. Diagnostic dye, dye testing, as you know, staining, fluorescein stain, surface where cell-to-cell -cell tie junction are absent. So it will help in severe cases. But Rosbingal stain did devitalize cells, but it can cause burning. So the best is lysamine green. It acts as Rosbingal, but without stinging or affecting viability of cells. Please, you have to know staining pattern is photographed and degraded using the scoring system to know the severity of dry eye. As you know, mobobin gland disease is a major etiological factor in the pathogenesis of many subtypes of dry eye. So we can use nowadays infrared myography. It recently utilized non-contact method to image both upper and lower eyelid. We found that mobobin gland dropout is correlated well with signs and symptoms of dry eye. In patient cytology, as you know, in advanced dry eyes, the epithelium undergoes pathological changes like squamous metaplasia, decreased density of goblet cell. Overall, in patient cytology is highly sensitive method, but needs high expert experience. As you know, the decreased corneal sensation can be both the cause and the effect of dry eye. So we can assess corneal sensation by corneal isocytometry. There are contact 
isothiometry and non-contact air jet isothiometry. Thermonesk is high. Nowadays, we use optical coherence tomography to provide non-invasive measures of tear film by quantifying the tear meniscus height. This is normal eye. This is the tear meniscus height in normal eye. But in this eye, this is dry eye. This is the tear meniscus height. So, so we can see the difference that tear meniscus height is very low in dry eye. So it is very helpful in diagnosis of dry eye. Ferning test, as you know, the tears of dry eye patient accept less ferning than those of normal patient because uh, the protein level is very low. So this test may reflect the quality of tear proteins profile. Also, we can assess inflammatory biomarkers in tear film. As you know, MMP matrix metalloproteinase, it is a key component of inflammatory cycle in dry eye disease. Also, we can assess by ELISA immunoglobulin A, but it has variable sensitivity and specificity. We can, according to the symptoms and signs, grade the severity of dry eye into level one, level two, three, and four. If dry eye is untreated, it will lead to eye infection like bacterial keratitis, damage to the ocular surface, sterile melting, which lead to blindness. Also, this will lead to decreased quality of life. So, Dry eye, as I said before, it is a progressive li lifelong inflammatory symptomatic disease. So our treatment must aim for explanation of the disease for the patient and psychotherapy if needed, prevention of aggravating factors, treatment of the cause, especially inflammation, stimulation of tear, secretion, replacement of tear, maintenance of tear, treatment of ocular surface disorders. Prevention of aggravating factors, stop non-required medication, also topical or systemic medication, which can lead to a dry eye, as mentioned before. Also change in environment, which can lead to dry eye by air condition or humidifiers. About long periods of near work, we can do frequent breaks, which is called 20-20-20 rule. Also, we have to treat aggressively the disease can lead to just viral, like viral infection and allergy. Also, we have to strict follow up pregnant woman and patient with hormonal replacement therapy and contact lens wearers. Also, we have to stress on some ocular surgery. We have to examine preoperatively and postoperatively, as you know, refractive surgery, blepharoplasty, keratoplasty, and cataract surgery can lead to ocular dryness. So it's very important to detect it and manage before surgery. Lebrocans, replacement of tear, as you know, artificial tear usually are the first step in dry eye treatment. Artificial tears can be drops, gel, pomades, spray, and certs. Many brands are available without prescription in the market nowadays, also in a wide variety of ingredients and viscosity. It lubricates the ocular surface, it reduces tear osmolarity. The challenge with using it is the confusing number of brands and the formulation available to choose from. So the decision is based on patient and doctor preference and preserved. There are many active ingredients, as I said before, can provide uh, viscosity and tear film stability. Also, there are many preservatives. As you know, ocular complication of preservatives like pigmentation, irritation, allergy, toxic effect. So due to these side effects, nowadays we use preservative-free artificial tears. This is the products available now in the market, preservative-free artificial tears. We can use gel tears 
as you know, it has more viscosity than drops and less greasy than pomades in severe cases and night uh, time uh, use. Also, pomades form an oily layer on ocular surface, which can remain longer than drops. They are used also for severe dry eye, exposure keratopathy, and nighttime use. This is the products in the market. Like we said, we can use one daily for severe dry eye. As you know, it inserts in lower fornix. The effect begins after one hour and remains for 24 hours. The advantage of micro, uh, micro insert it is more expensive, it can be dislocated, also eye redness and discomfort. Artificial tear spray, spray is, has less chance of contamination, so it, 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 it is considered the, uh, the best treatment, but the cost is a barrier for that. Vital tears, otologous serum contains mediators that can maintain healthy ocular surface like VGF, vitamin A, lysosomes, HGVF. It is very useful in severe equus tears deficiency and refractory cases. The major challenge is accessibility and the cost. Treat the cause, please. When you have mumbobin gland disease, you have to treat aggressively. Also, allergy, lack of salmus, ocular surface disorders, and inflammation. Nowadays, there are many anti-inflammatory therapy we can use in dry eye. First, corticos topical corticosteroid it is a potent immune suppressor which control ocular surface inflammation for short duration. We prefer low potency like fluoromycillin to avoid complication, ocular complication. It can be combined with cyclosporin A. As you know, cyclosporin A prevents T cell activation. It prevents ocular surface inflammation and apoptosis. We can use topical steroid 0.05 twice daily for three to six months duration. It can increase the density of mucus filled goblet cell. Nowadays, there are new medications like Sequoia that has highest concentration of cyclosporin, 0.09%. It uses a novel nanomesular technology which allows it to penetrate the tear layer better. So we can take better tolerance and ocular bioavailability. Also, Zedra, it reduces symptoms and signs of dry eye disease. It's generally well tolerated, but it is limited studs. Tetracycline has very potent anti-inflammatory effects. It usually it used especially in dry eye disease with mumbobian gland disease. As you know, it stabilizes tear film, it decreases mumbobian gland dysfunction and rosea. Also, we can treat recurrent erosion and the refractory cases. Essential fatty acid omega-3 supplement decreases inflammatory markers and ameliorate dry eye symptoms in clinical trials. Generally recommended to be used for all patients with no medical contraindication. Nowadays, topical alpha lyonic acid may be novel, novel therapy for dry, dry eye. I think you have, you, you know this contact lens, it is clear uh, lens, it's called Borussi. It has fluid filled reservoir hydrates the cornea and shields it from blank trauma or noxious environmental stimuli and inflammatory mediators in the tear. Their use remain limited partly due to availability and the cost. New technology in treatment of dry eye, especially in mobobian gland dysfunction is tear care. It is an automated heat device applied to the eyelid for 15 minutes followed by manual expression. It is very promising very costly and unavailable as a treatment option. Also, is well-established device uses heat and pressure on the eyelid. Studies show improvement of signs and symptoms when glands are present, but the cost is a barrier. Seven hundred to nine hundred dollars per eye. Surgical treatment, as you know used when medication doesn't elevate symptoms in severe or refractory dry eye disease. 
to prevent tear drainage, you can use punctal occlusion, and to prevent tear evaporation, we can do tarsography or canstrophy or transplantation of secretory glands. These are the lacrimal plugs which is available, which are available in the market, temporary and reversible and permanent. Please, before you do that, you have to complete the application of the animation. There are many complications, so I think it is controversial to use this blood. There is no device nowadays. It is an intranasal neurostimulation device. It has FDA approval, portable handheld device. It transmits series of low voltage electrical pulse to trigeminal nerve, triggering the nasolacrimal reflex to stimulate natural tear production. Also, the application of amniotic membrane is social free in office procedure, procedures. It has anti inflammatory and restorative uh, probabilities in a variety of ocular disorders. The rule of treatment of dry eye is unclear due to a limited number of studies. This is a recommended treatment according to the severity level of dry eye. Because the time I think uh, finished, we can uh, see uh, after this. Please, I concentrate, please, every doctor, we have to standardize your approach. Standardized treatment can facilitate decision-making. Also, graphical analysis over time can emphasize treatment effect and enhance compliance. Chronological record of treatment, what has done, what has been done, and what worked, and can be easier to integrate new treatment option while keeping established option on everybody, everybody's mind. This is the summary of challenges in management of dry eye you can read after session. Thank you very much.